The Cinders of Dezu, written and read by Oliver Tonic. A tyrant king, a missing girl, and a journey through a perilous world. Join me for this completed sci-fi fantasy novel read as an audio series. Enjoy the story from here on, or binge from the beginning with the first episode. Like and subscribe if you enjoy. My audiobooks are totally free. If you'd like to donate to support my writing, though, check out my Patreon in the description. And now, back to the tale. Chapter 2 A Walk in the Night Cairo, Reyna, Julian, and Devin all sat in the theater room as their movie ended. Reyna was bundled up tight with a mug that had been filled with her favorite toffee-flavored hot cocoa. After her bout with the ocean, she had been all worn out when she got in. Her father had doted on her. She hated the fact that she had proven all his fears correct. The experience had certainly scared her, but her frustration rivaled her residual fear. Coco in a movie helped. All right, little one, time for bed, said Devin. Raina sighed and nodded as she got up. Lost all your fight against bedtime in the waves, huh? said Julian. Raina put her blanket over her shoulders and headed around the couch toward the door. Devin got up with her. Good night, Fluff, Cairo said. Raina yawned. Good night, you guys. She walked out of the room. Devin went out with her and then stopped before closing the door. Oh, Kai! He walked back in and closed the door. I forgot to tell you I have a work thing tonight. Julian turned around on the couch, wide-eyed. Oh, snap! Can you tell us about it? Devin laughed. It's a conference call. The new director I'm working with wanted me to do a reading with a few people. He's an interesting guy. Anyway, I just wanted you to know so you can cover Raina Watch for me. Yeah, of course, Cairo said. Oh, the sleepwalk thing, said Julian. Right said Dev. So if she gets up, I'll need you to handle it tonight? No problem at all, Kai reaffirmed. We'll keep an eye out. I'm sure we'll be up. Just then, quick footsteps could be heard rushing toward the door. Raina burst in. Julian! I can't believe it! They all looked to see her holding the bright red stone out in front of her. It was a magnificent, glistening thing. It was a little bigger than the palm of Raina's hand and was a type of crystal. It could now be seen that the glow of the thing was no trick of the light. It had its own glow, even in the dark of the theater room. What on earth is that? said Devin. Cairo looked at Julian. You got it? You didn't even say anything. He smiled. Better believe it. It was on my nightstand next to my bed, said Raina. You are so cool. Thank you. She ran to him and hugged him over the couch. He gave a little grunt in response. Don't mention it, he said with a smile. The stone was still in her hand as her arms were wrapped around Julian. Cairo looked at it closely. What is that thing? Devin was looking at it too. Can I see that? Raina released Julian and handed the stone to her father. Huh, he said, turning it over. The thing had what looked like refracted light in it that seemed to sparkle like a diamond. But the light was definitely internal and not external. The stone glowed with its red glow and shone faintly on the walls of the theater room. I have never seen anything like this. Right? said Cairo. I think it was worth diving for. Well, you can use it as a nightlight, Devin said, handing it back to his daughter. Raina headed for the door and then looked at Cairo. He might be the new big brother. Cairo put his arms out. Over the one who saved your life today? Raina raised her eyebrows and shrugged as she walked out. Devin laughed and left with her. The guys both turned around and faced the big screen. Cairo scoffed. The girl's a jerk. The evening went late into the night. The guys were talking over videos they were watching online after they were temporarily burnt out on a new boss they had reached in Knights of Ablasia. I just don't know how you do it, man. Julian said. Cairo shrugged. It's really not that big of a deal, and it's rewarding, ultimately. Sure, man, but diapers? 
grown folks diapers it's not that bad he said for you i definitely could do it well it's part of my curriculum for nursing so you have to get down and dirty sooner or later <laughs> you have too much julian stopped kyra heard it too something had bumped just outside the door they looked at each other and paused the video they had been talking over they could hear soft footsteps both of them hopped over the back of the couch and opened the door there she was, wandering around the hallway. She was gently bumping against the walls as she went. So you just follow her, right? Julian whispered. Cairo nodded. They tailed Raina down the halls until she reached the dining area. She managed not to bump the table too much or any of the chairs. She reached a sliding glass door that led outside. They watched her gently feel for the latch and unlock it. She grabbed the handle and very deliberately slid it open. Are you sure she's not awake? Whispered Julian. Cairo nodded. Dude, that is crazy. Raina headed out the door, leaving it slid open behind her as she began walking along the gray stone path. It was a pretty and winding thing with a gray that was so dark it was almost black. She followed it for a ways into the tropical forest. She was wearing only pajamas, but the storm had died down and all that was left was a warm night breeze. The moon shone down on her through the shadowy fingers of the palm branches. Cairo and Julian were still dressed for the day and hadn't even gotten into their night clothes after they had changed from swimming. Their shoes had been just outside the glass door, so they easily slipped them on before continuing to follow her. They had been a bit wet from being carried with their sopping swim gear. The soles had bits of wet sand lining the inside of them. Julian had noticed a bit of a soggy squeak when he walked, but Kyra was concerned for Reyna, as he had noticed she was barefoot. The path was clear, though, with only a small layer of sand sprinkled over the top of it. When she was nearing the end of the path, the boys had caught up with her and were following closely behind. I know we can't wake her, but she'd be so easy to just pick up right now, said Julian in a hushed tone. It was true. Reyna was quite small and petite, even for her age. It was hard to imagine how waking her at this point would cause any problem, even if she thrashed around. She'll lay down in a second, Cairo said, nodding his head toward the end of the paved walkway. It's just up here. There at the end, the path split and circled a large stone slab. Palm trees were lined around it, arcing their shadows over the spot. It was a smooth, flat boulder with something white and gray laid over the top of it. He could see it was a small blanket. The boulder had an engraved inscription plate attached to the front of it. Julian squinted, but couldn't make out what it said in the dark. Man, your uncle went all out, didn't he? Cairo sighed. Yeah, he did. Raina reached her destination. She crawled over the inscription and onto the soft white and gray surface. The boulder had a bit of a concave in the middle where the blanket was, like it was made exactly for her to curl herself atop the soft surface of the smooth stone slab. The young girl looked as peaceful as could be as the two stared at her. That's something else, said Julian. Isn't it, said Cairo. Happens every night she's here. Does she sleepwalk at home, too? Sometimes. Does she go anywhere else? Nope, it's weird. Uncle Dev says she just wanders the house at home, never leaves it. But here? Every single time she comes to this spot and lays right here. And that's why he had the path built for her. Right. Before it was just the inscription. But then he wanted her to have a place to walk and then planted the trees around it. Julian shook his head. <laughs> Rich people. For real. The two headed to her resting place, and Cairo stood over her. Okie doke, little lady, he said as he leaned down to lift her. Julian was staring at the small cover that blanketed the stone. He couldn't tell what fixed it in place, but it looked natural, like it was just laying there with nothing to hold it. Even in the dark, you could see it was a bright white color with curved silver-gray stripes that accented it vertically. Huh, he said. It really is fluffy. Cairo nodded as he readjusted the young girl in his arms to carry her back. He suddenly stopped and was staring at something. What? said Julian. Um, she... It looks like she carried the stone with her. 
What? Julian got closer to look. There, clutched tightly in her right hand and glowing faintly, was the red crystal. I can't believe she didn't drop it, said Cairo. Why did she even pick it up? The stone's glow was a bit brighter now. Cairo moved her so they could get a closer look at it. Rena's hand clutched the stone tighter. As he held her in his arms, she pulled it close to her chest. Julian felt a swell of pride. He was happy he had gotten her something she loved so much that she was trying to keep it safe in her sleep. They turned to head back when the glow of the stone grew even brighter, bright enough for both of the boys to turn and look at it. The red light lit up Reyna's face and then both of their own. Their eyes were wide while Reyna still slept peacefully. The light got so bright it became hard to look at. Cairo began to squint and Julian started to shield his view. Before either could react, something that looked like an arcing ray of light followed nearly instantly by a web of identical structures erupted from the stone's light. It passed through them and surrounded them in a kind of spherical cage. What followed was something like a static mist that replaced the light. It dissipated quickly. In all, the event lasted about two seconds, just long enough for Cairo and Julian's minds to register what their eyes were seeing and not a moment more. The trees had changed. These looked more like pines. Cairo was sure he hadn't seen anything like them before on the island. Julian was suddenly trembling and shivering from the cold. What just happened? Cairo was gazing at the trees, looking at their tops and the black sky above them. He looked down. The gray stone path was gone. This isn't... We aren't where we were. For a moment, he thought maybe he was just confused and had gotten disoriented. Rena still slept in his arms. He looked down at her balled-up hand where the stone had been resting. He opened her fingers. It wasn't there. He rubbed her smooth palm. It was warm. Very warm. But there was no trace of the crystal. He looked down around her feet to see if it had dropped. The ground didn't look right either. It wasn't sand, and different debris littered the ground, again indicating that these trees were not the same. This place wasn't the same. They had moved, without a doubt. But where? Kai... Julian called softly. I know, he whispered. Something behind them scurried. They both whipped around to see nothing but more trees. They were in a small clearing. Cairo set Reyna on the ground, standing her on her feet, and began trying to rouse her. Reyna, honey, I need you to wake up. Reyna? Reyna. He rubbed her shoulder and shook her just a little. Slowly her eyes blinked, but they wouldn't open fully. Hmm... She muttered, What did you do? Where's the stone? He said in his softest voice. He thought maybe she could remember something. Were you dreaming? What, what were you just dreaming? Julian started walking around nervously. Man, I don't even think we're on the island anymore, Kai. This is some kind of weird. Did you see that light, the one from her hand? And then that smoke, and then, I mean, I don't know. Do you see it anywhere, the stone? Kyra asked him. She don't have it? Kyra was gently trying to wake Reyna. No, do you see it? I can't find it. Julian started searching the ground, circling them. He looked near them and then searched the edges of the small clearing. No, it's not here. There's, there's something here, though. Reyna started to wake up. What is it? Cairo asked him, keeping his eyes on her. Julian examined what he found. It's like a piece of metal or something, but it's kind of buried and sticking up, like... They heard a scurrying sound again, this time from behind the trees on the other side of the clearing. Julian got nervous. Let's go, man. I don't want what the... I don't know what that was. We should go. Reyna finally had her eyes open. She started to speak. What? She paused and looked around. Where are we? Cairo stood up and grabbed her by the hand. That's what we want to know. <laughs> Suddenly, a hush fell over the night. This startled Cairo. He hadn't noticed the ambiance of forest sounds that had previously surrounded them until there was an absence of them. He finally turned his attention to Julian to see his friend frozen in place. He was facing the trees. He knew to say nothing, as Julian was never this still nor this quiet. He gripped Reyna's hand tight as he slowly leaned his head over to see what it was that captivated his friend so totally. 
In the black, between the shadows of the trees, was a glow. It was a small, light orange glow that slowly moved through the dark. Then, with a swift motion, the one orange glow became two. A chill ran up Cairo's back as he realized they were a pair of eyes. And even before the creature came into view, he knew there was no good intent in them. With slow intensity, the figure emerged from the shadows, and a gentle, soft light blanketed the creature's snout. It lit up its gleaming teeth, then its brow, and then its turned-down black ears. His large, furry, black face came into view, the edges of his hair colored with flecks of ashen gray. Its paw was lifted, and the creature's whole body was tense, poised to strike. Reina had seen the creature by this point and was squeezing Cairo's hand. She began backing up in an all-consuming fear. Reina loved wolves, mostly because she loved dogs. Dogs spoke to her in a way that very few other creatures did. They usually had a simple friendliness to them. But mean dogs were hard to reason with, even for her. But she had never had the opportunity to interact with a wolf. She was not swayed by any sort of childhood naivete. She knew better than to reason with the hunting eye of a predator. Before she knew what she was doing, she had yanked her hand from Cairo and tore off into the forest. Cairo whipped around in horror as she disappeared. Julian heard her take off, but was made more aware by the wolf creature's reaction to it. While before its eyes were trained on Julian, they shifted to see fleeing prey. Its instincts took over. It shot completely out of the darkness after her. Cairo saw this and instinctively dived toward the wolf to save his cousin, a decision he instantly reconsidered upon colliding with the ground and missing the beast entirely. He thought about what the dog would have done to him had he caught it. He then thought it best not to think too deeply about that as he scrambled to his feet. He ran after the dog's tail as it disappeared into the trees. Julian quickly went after them both. The forest was very dark, and although their eyes had acclimated to it, it was all they could do not to run into trees. They both ran as fast as they could in the dark, all the while pushing off trees to get a better sense of their surroundings and the obstacles ahead of them. Kyra could hear the shuffling of his feet as he ran. He could hear the dog growling and running up ahead, so he knew he hadn't caught up to Raina yet. They ducked under branches and around trees, but could only see clearly when the moonlight was able to pierce the thick, shadowy overcast of the pines. Raina's legs were taking her as fast as they could carry her. She was quickly realizing what a bad idea it was to try to outrun a canine, and barefoot nonetheless. She had given herself quite the head start on the wolf, but she could feel him getting closer. The rustle of the dirt beneath his feet was getting louder, and she could hear that his speed was effortless as he gained on her. Remarkably, she hadn't stepped on anything sharp or prickly yet, or perhaps she hadn't noticed due to fear. Her legs burned, but it wasn't enough. The hairs on the back of her neck raised as she felt time slow in the split second that the wolf's back legs left the ground. Silent emptiness hung in the air along with the lunging beast. Its eyes were trained on Reina's neck, its jaws agape with rows of teeth at the ready. Reina blinked her eyes shut in anticipation, but her feet kept moving in what she thought was the last moment of her life. She heard a thud like the collision of a body into another, and then a thud in quick succession like something hitting the ground. Her life didn't end. She opened her eyes. She was still running. No teeth in her. She took that moment to dash around a tree to the right and change direction. She didn't dare look back. Cairo was the one to hear it first as he came up on it. A whimper and a howl. He stopped as he came upon the dog they were chasing pinned to the ground by another body. Another wolf creature. This one was much bigger. It had its jaws wrapped around the neck of the first one, biting it into submission. It struggled to fight back as the one doing the pinning growled. Julian came up quickly behind Cairo, who was still stopped at the scene. Where is she? He swallowed the rest of his words. His heart sank when he saw what Cairo saw. Not only was the silhouette of the wolf freakishly large as he shook the lesser dog, its eyes glowed a blood red. Cairo spoke breathlessly. Come on. Rightly deducing the direction she took, Cairo went right. He kept up his speed. 
He needed to find her before she ran into something else. He didn't know how long the bigger dog would be preoccupied with the other over which one of them would catch the girl as prey. Julian was right behind them. It wasn't long before they caught up to her. She was running ahead of them, and Cairo called out to her at the same moment that a howl rang through the night. The larger wolf was after the claim he'd rightfully staked. Keep going, he called out to her. We're right behind you. He tried to call out and yet keep his voice down at the same time. Reyna wasn't aimless. I, I see a light, she called back. There was a soft glow that she could see through the trees and above the treetops. It was a soft orange haze. The boys could see it too. Don't stop, said Cairo in a loud whisper. <laughs> this is insane, Julian said, realizing he was almost out of breath. They could hear the growls and snarls of the beast on its way. Leaves crunched underneath their feet. They were almost there. They could see it now. It was a wall, a very tall wall. It was made of sawed-off logs. They could see the tops of them came to a point. Raina remembered seeing pictures of these types of fences when she learned about the early settlers and the Native Americans in her history lessons. She had never seen one like it before in real life. The wall got closer and closer, and the snarls of the wolf grew louder and louder. Finally, the trees ended and they found themselves in a clearing between the forest and the wall. They could see how long the fence was now, and that it had erected poles outside of it with torches burning bright. They could see the entrance, a door to their far left. They ran, cutting across the clearing and passing the burning torches. They nearly slammed against the door as they reached it. It was big and made of smooth wood planks that held together by metal braces. They all began pounding on it and screaming. Let us in! Please! Don't leave us out here! Julian turned around to see their pursuer. He didn't. The clearing was... clear. There was about a hundred feet between the forest and the fence. He knew they couldn't have had that much of a head start on it. He couldn't hear the growling anymore either. But he thought he had heard another sound. A sound like trees shaking. He looked across the landscape to see, to his far left, the rocking of tall branches. He squinted. Reyna and Cairo were still banging and yelling when they heard the loud crack of a trunk in the distance, almost like it was being snapped in half. They turned to face what Julian was looking at. They couldn't see it, but they heard a tree fall as it broke the branches of the other pines in their view. Loud and heavy footfalls could be heard, striking the ground with soft tremors as they went. Something else was in the woods, and it wasn't the wolf. The footfalls were slow at first, then they grew in rapidity. As the new creature moved behind the trees at the edge of the clearing, they could tell by how high up the tree branches shook that this creature was very large, possibly even larger than an elephant. There was no way to see a silhouette as the light from the torches pushed the shadows away from them. They heard what they thought was scurrying from another animal. Then the footfalls got quicker. The creature was running with loud but swift stomping. Another loud crack from a broken branch and the footfalls had stopped abruptly, followed by a loud and violent whimper of the now helpless wolf. The forest was hushed for a moment as it watched the descent of Predator onto its prey. The stomps quickly resumed and then grew more and more distant along with the wolf's howls of pain. Desperate whimpers echoed as it was carried away. Its cries eventually ceased, leaving the natural noises of the night to take over once again, surrounding Reyna and the boys. They stood dumbfounded and still. The door that had previously been their singular focus creaked open behind them. Hello? came a man's voice. They turned around to see a figure holding the door. He was wearing armor. He had a black metal chest plate and gauntlets on his arms that had a red hue to them. Julian thought he looked like a modern version of a medieval soldier. Come, come, get in, he said, gesturing. They quickly came inside the walls. The man closed the door and latched it behind them. The streets of the inside of the village were fairly bright. Torches lit the streets like lampposts. Wherever the light of one torch ended, the light of another torch began. It was as though the light radius had been measured out. Neat and small cabin homes lined the inside of the walls, row after row. They couldn't see how big it was, but there was something odd about it. Raina thought it reminded her of her history textbooks. Julian thought it looked more like a reenactment of some sort of old medieval culture. 
The guard came around the front of the frantic young people. They could see he was a young man looking to be somewhere in his twenties. Boy, you people are a long way from home. The nearest town isn't for miles, he said with a smile. He reached out and quickly shook each of their hands. My name's Boke, officer of the King's Guard. It's a pleasure to meet you. They stared back at him, looking frazzled, trembling with wide eyes and breathing heavily. It's always a relief to see someone make it into town and not become a victim of the night. Bless you three. You didn't lose anyone in your party, did you? He pulled out a clipboard. Cairo thought a clipboard seemed out of place with what he was wearing. Julian looked confused. In our party? It's just us. The man called Boke pulled out something to write with and started in on his clipboard. He muttered each word as he wrote it. Okay, three people, no losses. The three of them looked at each other as the man wrote. He finished before looking up and smiling at them. Come with me. Hey guys, it's Oliver. Thanks so much for listening. Give me a like and subscribe if you want to hear more. Support this book and my continued writing through Patreon. I'll have regular episodes up until all chapters of this story are fully released. So stay tuned.